Welcome back, Breakfast Club. We are rounding out our warm-up week, our training week, for the upcoming series, The Bible Says What? In it, we are going to explore the many passages that give people heart palpitations, <laughs> but often have a pretty simple explanation. But I didn't want to dive straight in because a lot of errors are of the general kind of reading errors that people often make with the Bible. I wanted to arm you with the ability to read scripture properly, as well as give you the tools you need to help others who are not as familiar with the Bible as you when they hear something weird or see a meme that quotes a difficult passage. You may have to review this week's breakfast to keep common reading errors freshly recognizable. We have just a few more mistakes in reading to cover, so let's finish up. Mistake number 14. Forgetting that only the original copy is without error. You may hear astronomical numbers about how many errors the Bible has in it. Thousands. This can make a person really question the trustworthiness of this supposed holy book. The fact is, we have none of the originals. None have survived, which is in a sense a pretty good thing because we probably tend to revere them or worse. All we have is copies. The good news is we have many, many, many copies dating right back to the early years of the church. By comparing these numerous copies, it is often easy to establish what the original said. An error in a copy, therefore, is not the end of the world. Copyists, even though very careful, are human and do make errors from time to time. But because the Bible was so widespread, it was practically impossible for one error to be permanent. Sooner or later, it would be compared to other copies and when discovered, corrected. For example, 2 Kings 8.26 says Ahaziah was 22 when he became king. But 2 Chronicles 22.2 says he was 42. The second cannot be right because he'd be older than his dad. So it was clearly a copyist error that needed correcting. Keep this in mind. No copyist error has ever put a major doctrine into question. Never. Often they are spelling mistakes, numeric mistakes, and the like. These types of inconsequential copyist errors are added up and multiplied by the number of copies they are contained in. It sounds impressive until you realize that these errors really didn't change anything at all. Our modern translations have the benefit of thousands of copies in which to compare, making them highly accurate to the original. Mistake number 15, making general statements universal. The book of Proverbs is the best place to show this reading mistake. Taken at face value, it looks like a lot of sure bets. If you do A, then B will happen. The problem is it doesn't always work like that. Proverbs are wisdom literature, not law. Direct your children onto the right path, and when they are older, they will not leave it, is what we read in Proverbs 22.6. But this is a generalization, not a rule. When the Bible says that men are stronger than women, it is a generalization, not true at all times among all people. Mistake number 16. Forgetting that not all of the Bible applies to us. We live under the covenant of grace, not the covenant of law. Much of the Old Testament law was meant for the Jewish people. We no longer sacrifice animals or worry about dietary restrictions or concern ourselves with ceremonial purity. Jesus fulfilled the law for us. Commands to the Jewish people as they took over the promised land obviously no longer apply. Not all directives in the Bible are for today but were for a particular people at a particular time. All scripture is useful, though, to gain truth, to correct us, and to teach us to do right. Interpreting laws within the context of the agreement they had with God at the time is crucial to know if the specifics apply to us now. So, we learn that we are to not freak out when we hear of errors in the Bible, the transmission of the Bible is not like the telephone game in youth group where a message is whispered once into someone's ear and they have to try their best to recreate that message to someone else, ending up in a garbled mess. Errors are minor in nature and are almost always easily recognized and corrected. 
we learn that some things the Bible says are to be taken as generalities and not as hard and fast rules with no exceptions. We finally learn that there are great sections in the Bible that, while inspired, while we can learn from them, are not specific instructions for us today. All right, we have looked at common reading errors and we hope that this helps you as you open the pages of this amazing book written by over 40 authors on three different continents over a 1500 year period. This is really a collection of books with different genres and audiences, which requires wisdom and study. No wonder Paul wrote to Timothy, be a good worker who correctly explains the word of truth. Next week, we begin our journey of looking at difficult passages of scripture so that you can gain confidence yourself and will be ready to explain it to others in the hopes that they will let Jesus set them free. Let's pray. Lord, prepare us for the upcoming journey. Help us to listen to your wisdom, your grace, your insight, and your love. May we, like Timothy, work hard and be ready to correctly explain this message you have written to those around us. May we be bold, clear, humble, and compassionate as we do so. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, there you are. That was your training for the week. We are ready to go as we start The Bible Says What. We'll see you then.